All right, this is the latest episode of Crash Course where I try and help you out. If you're falling off your bike, send your videos in using the GMBN uploader. We'll use them for fails and bails potentially in the dirt shed and in these videos where I'll give you a bit of advice, hopefully on how to avoid them. But we do get sent loads of crashes. There's lots of people falling off their bikes, but send them in, I'd like to see them anyway. Um, right, first one is Gabriel riding a specialized stump jumper in Sweden in Ang Garden, I believe you say that. Just finished a few runs down some trails and we decided to try some drops, jumps on the way back. As I've only been riding for about two weeks, it was not the brightest decision to try the biggest drop they had, but it was fun. No major injuries. Ah, nice jersey, by the way. JMBN jersey in this. Um, yeah, it's a big old front wheel drop. You can see as you go off the drop off, it just sort of goes sailing down. So the way to do this, either just get your weight further back, but really it's about practicing your drop-offs. Um, trying them off little ones first, because it's the same skill. doesn't really matter what size a drop-off is. So obviously, if you can practice this, um, going off a tiny little drop-off, like a curb, I used to do that a lot when I was younger, and landing two wheels at the same time, then you can take that skill and that confidence to a bigger drop-off, and it's gonna be the same thing. So the first thing I'll say is maybe on a drop-off this size, even if you're not doing a nice manual, what you can do is sort of slide the bike forward to the edge. And that's gonna put you in the same position. And as long as you get the timing right, you'll be back behind the bike and it's gonna keep the front wheel up. Right, to another drop-off causing problems. Craig sent this one in. This is Cousin uh, in Stillwell Woods, Soset, New York. Uh, my cousin flew up from Florida to New York for a mountain biking weekend, literally went straight from the airport to trail. And in the first hour, this trip cost him a broken collarbone. Oh, gutted. Uh, not uncommon. Yeah, we hear about people breaking collarbones all their time. Such a common mountain bike injury and hurting themselves on the first run. I did that. I went to Whistler for two weeks, broke my shoulder on the very first run. So I guess just uh, from my experience, just take your time, warm into things before you go flying off drop-offs. What I can see with this crash is the bike goes sideways on the takeoff for the drop-off. So that actually um, the weight starts going to the side and that is going to cause problems. This is often caused by people pulling on the bars because you just don't judge that right. And people doing manuals can go one way or the other way. And just a little bit off a drop-off can go way worse. Doesn't quite look like that in this situation. Looks like maybe um, you hit something going off the drop-off, the front wheel hits something and it goes sideways. So it's just trying to find a good line coming in the drop and making sure you go off as straight as possible and not pulling on the bars and getting the front wheel sideways. And then you'll just stay in line. Again, with, with many things like jumps, drops, even just technical gnarly sections, always try to say, don't look at those. You should have already seen them by the time you've got there. You should be looking at the next thing, because often it's the next thing, be it a steep section or a corner, that can make you crash. It's not actually the drop off that's causing the problem. So always trying to ride what you're doing here in your peripheral vision. So I'm looking over there, but I can still see this bit down here, and I've already seen it back there. It's crazy, actually this next video is almost exactly the same thing. So this is sent in from Rikus in PwC Bike Park, South Africa. Uh, he says, my dad was telling me to take a video, so he failed on the smallest jump of all of them. Yeah, you can see this sideways off the, off the drop off. Uh, big problem as well. Um, you can see actually, Rikus, your dad was pedaling quite close to takeoff as well. That can cause you a bit of issues. Obviously, as you're pedaling, you're swinging your weight all around the place. It's much better to do it a bit earlier and then just set up so your weight is central to the bike and you're not going to get it off to the side of the bike. And you can see once it's gone wrong as well, front wheel goes sideways and you can see the tyre burps. So it literally sort of rips the tyre off the bead of the rim or the tyre bead and the air comes out and that makes it way worse. So as soon as that happens, the tyre sort of explodes and then all the weight goes forward. So I'll check the tyre pressure as well. Uh, I know sometimes people like to run really low pressure, especially the front for grip and a bit of compliance, which I think is fine a lot of the time, but when it goes wrong like this and the tyre goes too sideways and burps, then it's going to really cause you some issues. Get ready for an early one. This is Chris riding the Giant Stance 29er, Mount Penn, Reading, Pennsylvania. He says, found this new trail and tried the rock rolls. I missed the line a couple of feet to the left and went over the bars. I successfully did the rock and roll, the rock roll, sorry, after this bailout. Yeah, that's not, look at the phone on the bars as well. I always think that looks mad. It looks like you're just gonna smash your phone to bits. Um, or maybe you were just too busy Instagramming. That's why you crashed, misty line. Um, yeah, I would say something as gnarly as this, definitely walk it. I know, you know, from my 
experience of racing downhill where you'd always walk the track at least once, sometimes a couple of times over the weekend to make sure you're on exactly the right line. On a gnarly section of like this, that can make the difference between getting through a knot. You can see some big holes and that sends the weight forward and over the bar. So yeah, just try and nail your line. And if it goes wrong, sometimes it's better just to sort of stop if you can, because you never know how badly things can go if you go offline. Also get used to moving your weight around on the bike. If you realize that you're gonna go into a hole, trying and get it back, but it doesn't always go right. So yeah, line choice is the sort of number one cause of this thing going wrong. Right, uh, this is Sean riding a YT Capra CF Pro 2019 in the Kelso conservation area. I don't know where that is. Uh, riding a little tech with some buddies when I got a little surprise. Yeah, it's a gnarly section this, a uh, steep bit. Looking good actually on the steep and technical section, but then you get bucked over the bars on the drop off. Uh, this is quite a common one actually. If you go back, pause it, you can see you get too far back and actually sort of stuff your rear end into that tyre. What happens then, it just stalls the, bike, it stalls the bike and sort of bangs your weight forward and over the bars. Definitely seen this a lot of times in our fails and bails, people send them in. Uh, I mean, I use, well, I still do this. I still drag my bum occasion on the back tire, especially on 29ers, because I'm, I'm, what am I, five foot 10, one, seven, eight centimeters. I reckon I'm about on the cusp of being tall enough to ride a 29er sort of aggressively, because getting to the back of the bike, you do feel like you get close to it um, sooner. I, I know 27.5, or even going back a couple years, 26, isn't that much smaller, so, you know, it's only that much. I think you do definitely notice it. So it's a case of getting used to where your wheel is and geometry changes this, downhill bikes are different. So knowing where the back tire is, so you can move back to the extreme, but not go all the way in and hit it because that can cause this problem. But good effort, you're riding the rest of it really good and this is a big old crash, hopefully you're all right. Just get used to moving around the bike and knowing where the limits of movement come to. All right, that's it for this episode of Crash Course. Uh, user uploader, link is down below for anything. Sends and fails, bike vault, hacks and bodges. Love seeing those in Dirt Shed Show every week. And give thumbs up if you've ever fallen off your mountain bike. <laughs>